Okay, folks, for this screencast, we are going to do uh, Lyapunov stability and control. So I already have this code built, and I've actually already pushed it to my repo. Um, it's in the, if you look in the repo, um, it's in um, the my MATLAB repo nonlinear controls uh, folder, and it's called Lyapunov stability and control. Uh, so if you just go to my GitHub, you can download this code and you can follow along. Um, so the way Lyapunov stability and control works is by making what's called a Lyapunov function. And your Lyapunov function, in order to be a Lyapunov function, the function must be uh, positive uh, everywhere except the equilibrium point. Um, and at the equilibrium point, equilibrium point, uh, it must be zero. Okay, so I'm going to run this code, and basically what I've done is um, I have x, which goes from minus 10 to 10, x dot, which goes from minus 10 to 10, and then I mesh grid those, and then I create this Lyapunov function. So here is my, um, my mesh plot of that function. You'll notice that it is only zero right at the origin at zero zero so this system um, is a mass spring damper system and so everywhere else it's positive except for the um, origin when you take a derivative of v you get v dot and what happens is is that the two comes down and the one halves cancel and you get xx which is just x and then x dot. And then over here on the same thing, you get two uh, x dot times x double dot. Now x double dot for the spring mass damper system looks like this, negative k over mx minus b over mx dot. And so if you look at the derivative of v dot, you get this here. And so what this tells you is that v dot is always negative except at this line here okay and it turns out this is a Lyapunov function if v dot is uh, less than or equal to zero everywhere then the system is stable at the equal, equal equilibrium point. Note that v dot must be zero at the equal equilibrium point. Now I have a couple other example systems here, but if you scroll down, this is where I make the mesh plot for v. X, x dot and v and then this is where I make the mesh plot for x x dot and v dot and so there, these are these two systems here and so just by looking at these two plots here I can say that the system is stable now further down I have my um, derivatives routine um, first, there we go I have my derivatives routine and my derivatives routine says that um, my input is x vec and I have x x dot and x double dot and here's my x double dot and then I just return dx dt and so I actually decided to make a phase portrait just like I did in my last video and so I loop the initial conditions from minus 10 to 10 minus 10 to 10 and I integrate for 100 seconds and I plot it and that gives you this phase portrait here and so this is obvious uh, second order motion so you know this is the x-axis and this is x dot and so if I have any initial condition that loops around just the mat, like a mass spring damper system. Um, and so what, what's interesting, though, is that if you, say, take, you know, this condition, minus 10, 0, right? And so that's saying that the initial condition is here at minus 10 and 0. And you integrate this for 100 seconds. And then you compute the Lyapunov function at that point and then plot it 
what you'll find, and uh, it's going to take a minute to, uh, to go. So what you'll find here is that this is it plotted in three dimensional space. The initial V is, you know, pretty large, minus 10, zero, and then it loops around this way until it converges into zero. And you can get, you can see that the system is stable again because it's positive everywhere, but then V dot is always negative. So the idea is, is that if you're always, if V is always positive, but V dot is always negative, then that means that the only way you can go is down. Now, this is not like a gradient, so it's not like you're gonna follow the steepest descent. So you have to understand that, yes, V dot is zero at the initial condition, and X dot is zero. Because X is non-zero, negative 10, the derivative or the acceleration is also non-zero. So you can't just look at the Lyapunov function and say that my uh, time history is going to go down this way to the origin because the acceleration is actually pointing you that way. But you do know that if you then say plot the Lyapunov value as a function of time, what you'll find here is that V is constantly decaying and you know it's constantly decaying because again v dot is always negative now if i zoom in here at the lyapunov function at the beginning you can see that the slope of v at the beginning is zero and so indeed v dot the initial condition of v dot is zero but because the acceleration in the state space system is non-zero that causes my state to move which causes V dot to then go negative and then bring you down. So we can do this for a, a variety of systems here. So here's the mass spring damper system. I can then say, okay, let's do a stable pendulum. Okay. And uh, I'm actually going to comment this, this part out here because uh, this code, this part of the code does not work for all the systems. Um, but I can plot the Lyapunov function. So here's, a sta here's the uh, Lyapunov function that I created for a stable pendulum. And um, the equations of motion for a stable pendulum are here, negative g over lx minus bx dot. b is just that damping parameter. So if I run this, sorry, taking so long. There's my Lyapunov function. And it looks a little bit different because, uh, you know, I have g over 2l. So it looks a little bit different, um, but my Lyapunov function is still negative everywhere, and my phase portrait indeed is stable, and so I have a stable locus. Okay. If I then take the nonlinear stable pendulum, okay. So now my 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 Lyapunov function, when I take a derivative, does not look very simple. There's a sine function in here. And that's because if you look at the equations of motion of the stable nonlinear pendulum, it's negative g over l sine x. Okay, so now some interesting things happen when you bring in the nonlinear system. So the Lyapunov function is good; it's positive everywhere, but the derivative, the derivative now looks very, very odd. So what you'll notice is that in a vicinity around the origin, V dot is negative. But if you're too far away from the origin, V dot is actually positive. And again, because V dot is positive everywhere, or if, sorry, since V is positive everywhere, if V dot is positive, that means I'm going to fly away from the origin. And you see exactly that here. If you look at the region around zero zero the pendulum is stable but if you are flying too fast instead of going into the origin where the pendulum comes down to zero you'll actually spin all the way around and go into this stable region which is at two pi and you'll notice there are actually unstable regions at pi and minus pi which represent the inverted pendulum 
We can turn the crank again, since we're talking about inverted pendulums, and we can look at the inverted pendulum here. Now first, let's look at the linear one. So this is the inverted pendulum here. And look at, put plug in the equations of motion for the inverted pendulum. Uh, looks like I have control in here. I'm, uh, I'm just going to comment this out for now. And so here's the uh, unstable pendulum, linear. And so I've linearized the system, so there's only one equilibrium point. Um, I, my up and off function looks good, but unfortunately, again, if you look, so if you look here, there is no region of negative stability around the origin. We are always, it's zero at the origin, which is fine, but it's basically positive to the left and right. It's negative to the, it's negative forward and back, but this is a saddle point, right? You have one positive pole and one negative pole. So you're, you're negative along this axis, but positive along this axis, right? And so if you look at your face portrait, unfortunately, that is indeed an unstable point. And so just by looking at the Lyapunov functions here, you can completely get stability. So then let's look at the nonlinear pendulum, okay? So if we look at the nonlinear unstable pendulum, there's the Lyapunov function and the derivative. And then I can plug in the uh, equations of motion for the um, for this pendulum here. Oh, I should have commented this one out. Uh, so here's the Lyapunov function, and here is the system. And so this one, there is no region. Again, you there's there's like these humps from the sine waves, but there is no region of stability. And so again, directly around the origin we just completely fly away. Now again, how do we pick the different Lyapunov function where the equilibrium point was over here? We would have found what we found with the stable pendulum, which is that a, around the local region of the equilibrium point, we are stable. But this is saying that globally, our system is unstable. And we definitely get that from the face portrait. So the neat thing about the Lyapunov function is that you can actually design your control, you can actually design a controller such that it stabilizes a system. So if you look here, I've, der I've derived this on paper. Um, and let me, actually, let me pause the video and pull up the derivation. Okay, so I have the derivation here. So here you go. So here are the equations of motion of the nonlinear pendulum. You have g over l sine theta minus b theta dot, but you have plus u over ml squared. If you take your Lyapunov function, g over 2L theta squared plus 1 half theta dot squared, and you take a derivative, the 2 comes down and you get g over L theta theta dot plus the 2 comes down again theta dot theta double dot. And now instead of just plugging in this equation without the control input, you plug in the control input and you get this here. Now what I did was is I factored out a theta dot here. And then what I did was is I said, well, so here's the thing negative b theta dot times theta dot, that's negative b theta dot squared. So that will always be negative. So really I just need to get rid of this term here. So if I take this term here, right, if I make u this, the ml squared will cancel. This negative g over l theta plus sine theta will cancel with this term and I'll just get negative b theta dot squared. And so if we go back to our code, right, and I, grab, I, 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 I make this non-zero, and I get rid of this comment here, and we uh, minimize this real quick. Um, let me comment this out here as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to make my uh, Lyapunov function, rather than multiplying it like this, I'm going to I'm actually going to multiply it out and say that x double dot is and I'm going to copy these two lines of code here and put these up here. And so this is going to be u u and all of these are global variables. That's x x, that's x. Um, I think that's good. And then this is going to be x x dd dot. That's going to be x x 
xx dot uu. And so v dot is that two is going to come down and cancel the. Uh, oh, shoot. Was it supposed to be one half? I guess I. Was that in, was that in Google Drive? Okay, so there's it's or it's g over two l. Okay, so I need to get rid of this one half here. That I didn't need to put twos in the same spot. So you're gonna get g over l times x x dot times x x dot plus this two is gonna come down. And you're gonna get x x dot dot times x d d dot. Okay, and so first let's just make u zero. Okay. And down here, same thing, I'm going to put a zero in front of here and run this again just to make sure the code is working. I don't have a uh, bug in it. There the Lyapunov function is positive. V dot um, basically shows us that it's not globally stable. And our Lyapunov function shows an unstable, or sorry, face portrait shows an unstable region here. Now, if I then get rid of this zero and again according to my derivation if I plug this in I'm gonna get minus b theta dot squared if I plug that in and get rid of this zero down here and use this as a controller now again I'm using nonlinear control at this point right that's a nonlinear controller you've got a sine sine of x here a plus x here you get a very very weird control law it's not PID at all it's a it's a Lapinoff controller and so if I run this Now my, my V is the same, right? I haven't changed that, but because I've added a feedback control law, look at my V dot. It looks exactly like minus B theta dot squared. And if I look at my phase portrait, boom, I've completely stabilized my system. So I have a unstable nonlinear pendulum that I've stabilized with this nonlinear control law. And the way I did that is by plugging this in so that v dot is always negative. And that is basically Lyapunov control in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this video.